My name is Kathleen Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 22. It's Classics Puncher, and this is episode number 10. We're entering our second season now as a pro, and I'm incredibly worried about the season that we are kicking off here. Uh, first off, last season, that first year, we actually accumulated a decent amount of points to set our season up 45. This year, we're only getting 15. That's one of the problems with going with the higher teams on the list versus the lower teams on the list. So that one has a opposite effect. You figure higher team, better team, good things. Contracts technically are the same regardless. The 14000 that we got for this year, the last team on the list would have paid us 14000 You have a set evaluation. It's identical across all teams. You get a one-year contract, period. The one thing that does vary, though, that flips the script is you're rewarded in staying with a weaker team. The reward, the good thing to go into the bottom end, is you have more points available to alter your schedule for the year. This year we get 15. That's it. That will get us to a total of 60. It does allow me to make a change or two if I want to. But what I've always tended to do in the past, in this type of, in pro cyclist mode in general, is that for me it matters a whole lot more what race we're in when we are competing in the world tour, when we are competing for race wins, when I want to have the perfect season. If I didn't get set up to be in Perry roubaix by my team and that's the race that I want to go for, well, then I'm going to make sure that I'm in Perry roubaix But right now, this year, as a 20-year-old with a 76 cobble rating, I don't need to be in Perry roubaix right now. It'd be nice to get that invite. It'd be nice to see where we're at. But do I want to spend 20 points or whatever the, the total is to, to get there right now? I, I like saving those points. I like banking those points. Put them in a savings account, essentially, and hang on to them for later when the time is right, when the use means more. For another thing, we can't even get into the World Tour races yet. I mean, Cadell Evans' Great Ocean Raid, Road Race, I've got to be level 9 before I can get in there. We're still level 7. We're almost level 8. It's coming. It's coming soon. But it's not here yet. Well, anyway, what I'm worried about is the schedule that they gave me. Presumably, considering where we ended season one, we reached leader status, won our first race, and then literally the next race out, we got bumped from essentially the C team for total total energies up into the B team. And with that promotion, even though it happened, you know, right there, we, we were just getting the hint of leader status. And then we get one race as the unequivocal leader and then won it. <laughs> and then boom, B team. Riding with the B team means there's better domestiques, but then there's a th two to three leaders like the A team guys playing with the B team. That, that, that's the way this team seems to be organized. You have an A team for the World Tour. You have your best riders there. But then you have kind of a 1.5 squad, something you see in a lot of pro sports with, you know, like say FA Cup, right? Premier League teams are going to play six starters alongside five young guns who get limited minutes here and there and occasionally for some of those their first ever appearance for the team i've become that guy <laughs> i'm i'm that guy now i'm i'm in that b team squad serving the a team one or two leaders that are sent down to to race alongside us and as a result they've given me a support schedule I do not have a recovery rating at all. It is our lowest attribute at a 61. I do have a flat rating. I do have some stamina. And I think that is the primary reason 
that I'm suddenly that domestique for those A-team guys. So as we look through this calendar, you're going to see stage race after stage race after stage race where I'm going to be stuck as a domestique. You can see the first three months of the year is literally 100% stage races. The next phase of the season, we finally have won. In mid-April is our first classic. I'm a classics writer, puncher or cobble, either one. And the very first one-day race that we get is mid-April. And then we go right back to a lengthy stage race. We do finally then have Trobro Leon, a proper cobbled classic. So I have two. And that's mid-May now. Then they put us on a one-day race, which we did last year, I think. That is way too uh, beyond my capabilities. Don't count the Nationals, because that's not the team assigning me to that. Though there could be a race happening at that time that they would assign us to. I know PCM21 had that as a regular fault. There was always a race on the calendar right during the nationals and there was a number of seasons where we were assigned that and then i'm scrambling to find a handful of riders to send there that wouldn't impact as much what we were doing on the national championship scene but then nothing zero races the entire month of july we push into august and it's three more stage races before finally yes finally in September and October, we have not one, but five. Five one-day races. Chronodonations, of course. Same as what we did last season. That was the last race we, we did at the end of last episode. But we do get Perry Tour Elite and a few sprint races, which means I literally have three days on the calendar to look forward to this season. So I will, I think, sacrifice some of these points in the vault to add a couple days at least to the calendar. But what do I have, right? There's so many races that we can't go to yet that we don't qualify for yet. Level 8's not going to get those. You can see level 9 is kind of that next category that's going to open some of those up. So for now... We'll hang on to that. Now, of course, as I do reach level 9 at some point this season, we may suddenly find ourselves automatically picked by the team to participate. Flesh Wallon would be nice. <laughs> That's kind of the first one I'm looking at there going, hey, I, I would like to do that race. Would you like to help me out? <laughs> I think I'm speaking on deaf ears uh, to the team management this time but uh yeah that's gonna make for a rough season it's gonna be a lot of domestic duties where we're then sacrificing our own chances just to get a small amount of xp <laughs> is this the year that i hit that quick sim a little bit and sacrifice a little bit of xp to keep things moving along because the turn of the month is going to be a lot more influential i could go through a five stage race like this i'm gonna get zero xp on this day i might get a little something on this day but more realistically as i'm serving as a domestique on the b team surrounded now by top continental pro guys or guys that are in between continental pro and world tour status in terms of their quality leave me in the dust after spending 40k riding at the front at the start of the stage four times out and then get left in the dust in the final kilometers and finish 50th every stage. Okay, well, anyway, I am a little pessimistic about the season to come, but all we can do is make the best of it. We are 9 XP away from leveling up. It is the 1st of January, but my first race is the 2nd of February, which means it's going to happen on the 1st of February with the turn of the month. So let's go ahead and at least push forward, get that attribute gain, and maybe, just maybe, 
I'll get a really healthy upgrade, which could see us maybe <laughs> get some varied status here and there, you know, maybe a stage four free reign to attack uh, to go for the stage. They won't have me thinking overall with the uh, nine kilometer mm, time trial. I hate calling those time trials. I think prologue, anything under 10K to me is a prologue. But anyway, yeah, let's, let's at least get that uh, attribute increase out of the way and see where that puts us. After looking through all of my options for the level up, it's a very, very clear top two this time. We're not getting any significant bonuses to some of those secondary attributes that we have used our last couple of level ups on. It's Puncher or it's Northern Classics. The difference between the two is actually fairly minimal. Both of them significantly better than all the other level ups. It's either 12 or 14 points of attributes that we're gaining. That's that's a pretty good haul at, at this stage, you know, this far into it already. But one of them is plus two in that overall sense. And there's only a few subtle differences. So in Puncher, we're gaining flat hills, time trial, prologue, cobble, sprint, acceleration, bear door, stamina, resistance, recovery. It's a lot of different attributes. So we're making marginal gains kind of across the board. We're, where we make significant gain is plus two to hills and plus two to acceleration and a plus two to resistance. Everything else is a single point. Now in Northern Classics, the difference is a plus two to cobble and that same plus two to resistance, but we have a drop off. There's no gain in hills and only a gain of plus one in acceleration. So the difference with puncher is that plus two to hills compared to the classics, a minus one in cobble, but then a additional plus one, so a plus two versus a plus one in acceleration. That's where the extra two points are in the overall sense of things. So it is more impactful overall, plus I'm still gaining a point of cobble anyway. One less, but I'm still gaining, which will now put me in happy zone for flat, 74 now, you know, we're getting up there a bit. Uh, hills, that plus two is very much going to help. That extra point of cobble certainly helps. At a plus two in acceleration. Really happy with that one. I mean, that's that's up to a 79. We're, we're getting quite capable. And sprint at 70. Right? You add in a little race day condition bonus. You know, you get that up to a 73. It's going to put the acceleration well above 80. When you throw that in with a hills rating and a cobble rating, you know, we start to get fairly competitive in the in those two disciplines especially when you add in stamina and resistance you know both now into the 70s it's helping but a recovery of 62 uh, is still a a major ouch point and a mountain of 65 still a major ouch point but even if i took climber this time there's no gain in mountain i think it was like one point now i thought about the options between waiting to hit level nine and unlocking those basic world tour races to then spend some points to get into those better races, which of course is that goal all along. But I would just be a domestique at those races anyway, knowing where I stand with the team. So really what I need to have some races where I could actually go out and be the leader and be in that C team or a B team that just doesn't contain, you know, those best riders around or at least have some shot at getting a chance, getting a chance at riding for myself, it needs to be smaller races for this season. And since I, I literally only have two on the calendar for the entire year, I need to force my hand to get a couple more opportunities, at least a couple, right? So we have a handful of days on the year that can be for us. <laughs> so the first one we're adding in is a very minor ride here i'm guessing it's gravel uh, but it does seem to be labeled as cobble classic so 
uh, low level. That's the first one that we've signed up for, and it's mid-February, so it is coming up fairly soon, as it's already the 2nd of February. We have our second in mid-March with a proper cobbled classic. So after looking through, it's the team calendar that's mostly at fault here. The team calendar in general just lacks classics. Proper classics, punchy and cobbled classics. Period. There is just very, very little for total energies, let alone whether I, you know, get into it or not. So uh, for now, I'll take two and we'll see how the season progresses and, and go from there. I, there are a couple more options, but I don't want to spend a ton of points. I mean, this alone is costing me 12. I'm only bringing in 15 points this entire year. So my total in the bank is only going to increase by three this season, even if I don't add any additional days. It's the first race day of the year, but somebody has seemingly placed a knife into my side or my back or hidden it somewhere because I have a minus five race day condition. Ouch. Now, this is a race that is not a major team that we've brought to this one, but I'm still the domestique. I did my work and fortunately was able to do so without much effort. It didn't take too much. Uh, but because of the minus five race taking condition, I don't know what sort of chance I might have. This is the perfect profile. Zero race day condition, and I feel like this is a race win. Would be entirely possible, especially considering it only took a tiny amount of energy to complete the objective for the day as we approach here. We've already had the field split, even though there's not even a big push. I mean, you can see I'm only going to 67, but there's a big acceleration right now. What I want to know, though, is how this finish looks. We've got 10k to go. Here's the 1k banner that we go through right now. Turn right, and then there is that final climb. So, notable thing here is how skinny this road is. You've got width for about four riders is all. So if you can be one of those four or five riders at the front on that final climb, inside that final kilometer, you've got to be there at the start of it. It's going to be hard for somebody to pass you if you are out front and you are going harder than everybody else. So despite my terrible ratings on the day, there is still a marginal chance of getting something out of this race. 64 riders left in contention, no breakaway now. You're seeing a big push right there, but I've got to get myself forward. And, you know, my, my punch is only a 71 today. My acceleration is only a 76. The resistance is only a 60, which means it's going to fall away really fast. Uh, but 3K to go. Almost there. 2.5K. We need to scoot forward. Remember, like I said, the first four are going to be in the ideal place, which we are not going to win that battle. But let's sprint now. Out of my way. I can't get through. There's no way through. You can see that we're not actually doing anything as Mark Soler well, has just blocked me off. Venturini has taken the win, and yeah, we we just could could not get far enough forward in the early stages. I was a little too nervous about the, the lack of red bar. You know, I'm caught behind riders and not even accelerating, and yet somehow I still have 195 heart rate and just had that red bar deteriorate very, very quickly to move up one bike length, two bike lengths. Rue got 8th though, so I did have a teammate in a good position. I finished 24th on the stage. Let's hope for better, because I did not finish last season. Uh, with, I finished last season with a really poor string of race day conditions. This one started with a minus 4 draw. I was expected to have a minus 1 on the day, as I am not yet fit for the season. We took a slow start to keep the uh, fatigue crazy low. Something realistic that I went for on that one. You could easily keep it up and not have a problem. My string of bad luck in the race day condition continues. A long time ago, PCM 20, I want to say, I had a hunch 
that it wasn't balanced, that your draw would be more often negative than it was positive, and that maybe it was the difficulty level that had something to do with that. And then I, I started tracking data and realized that it was just that personal bias. It's just the, gosh, I remember how I had that negative race day condition draw, and then the next day you have a positive that's the exact opposite of it. It balances out. And you don't remember that one because you kind of grow to expect it because you take care of yourself and you're prepared for the race after race after race. And, and so the negative outcome stands out in your memory more than the positive outcomes. What I discovered from the test was it does ultimately balance out. I think I had maybe a minus two over a 25 day race period. So pretty much leveled off at about a zero and that minus two could easily have been accounted as we have just 7k to go and we need to prepare ourselves for the finish on this one and today i'm at full strength but here's that negative race day again minus two expected minus one fitness didn't magically happen overnight so you know it's only a minus one draw but it's still a minus four draw sorry minus five draw over the last two days and you know stretching out over the last where are we at nine ten races now is a minus nine or minus ten draw over the last eight or nine races so uh, i am on a bit of a bad streak but like i said long term it does balance out but i'm in a bit of a slump right now when it comes to those race day condition draws well, anyway uh we are set up 7k to go We've got a bit of an uphill swing on this one, which is certainly good for me, and I would like to ease my way to the front as soon as we start climbing, as soon as we hit 3%, really, there it is, and we're going to ease our way front, and then I want to attack. Oh, as De La Place blocks me off there, and going clear, five seconds ahead. Easing off a little bit as we have a slight separation. 2K to go from the top. Okay, now we want to go full 99. Nine seconds ahead, and they've already reeled me in. Dropping that hill rating down a little bit. Dropping that sprint and acceleration down a little bit. And especially dropping that resistance by four. Just took any chance I had at anything in this one away. Uh, let's see if... Final kilometer, he's already attacking, and now I sprint on. It's going to get me a top 10, maybe. But yeah, I, I failed to escape the group by more than a couple of seconds. And I think the biggest factor in that, not only is the minus 2 to the hills, minus 1 acceleration, but especially the minus 4 in resistance, which isn't very good to begin with. 14th on the stage. I'm going to need better race take condition than that to uh, perform, especially after spending time on the front. Today was a good day for it though. I mean, we, we had, we didn't have to put in terribly hard work and that's happened in both stages so far. The pace in the lead up to the end of the stage has, hasn't been too bad. Stage three, things are a little bit better for me as I finally have a positive race day condition. Bucking the trend, it's only the second time in the last about 10 or 11 stages that that has happened. However, as we proceed towards the end of this stage and do look like I'll be able to contend, we can see we're now dipping into our, our max energy uh, as we go through the final hill of the day, though there's a little bit of a additional peak here in a little bit. Uh, one negative for me though, uh, I, I was expected to have a zero now. I've, I've taken care of that fitness even though it's still labeled as an 84. I've got a couple racing days under my legs, and yeah, so now I no longer expect a minus one. I expect a zero. Just 21 riders left chasing three at the moment with 9K to go. And these guys are attacking for the sprint point, I would think. Yes, they are. That catches the breakaway, but that also sets us up. 28 riders going for the last 6K. Gel up, and let's start working our way forward. That was the last little hill, so... Got to just try to get forward, get in best position as I can. I still have the 70-79 in the sprint. 2K to go. One and a half K to go. Easing my way forward. Now sprinting it out. Getting that nice little acceleration bonus. That's a lapped rider. I'm going to cross line fifth. 
No, McNulty was off to the far hand side, hugging the uh, sponsorship board, and I didn't see him. Milano is who I had passed right before the line, but McNulty was a little bit further over. We just missed the top five. Sixth on the stage. Team leader Ryu got uh, 13th. So we just rode 40 kilometers with a group of just over 20 in the peloton. We finished with that same group. We had a gap of two minutes or close to two minutes to the next group. It was a good minute and a half anyway to the next group. But we end up with same time all the way down to 109th. Two years ago, this was supposed to be fixed. Two years. It's still as broken as ever. And for me, one of the most annoying parts to, to this game, to this day, just drives me absolutely nuts that you can see gaps of a minute and a half. That's a sizable gap. Right? Tour de France stage just the other day, we had gaps of one second given. <laughs> we had gaps of three seconds given in numerous places to riders. Now it is a sprint stage. They're a little more lenient with the assignment of groups. But we were clear 40k before the finish. 45, almost 50k before the finish. And the same group that broke away at that point never regained contact. And when we finished the stage, there was a significant gap to the, the closest chasers. Stage four and some of the favorites for the stage just went down in a crash that's probably going to leave them out of contention for this one also my own contention is very much in jeopardy as the very poor mountain rating over those previous couple of climbs with intense pace saw me slide backwards pretty fast i am making my way back forward now but very slowly and it's it's certainly costing me uh, energy as we're about to both dip into the maximum on the day and even the current as I try to try to get forward again. Uh, we finish on a punchy climb, which would suit me, but with the race day condition uh, being fairly neutral, technically it's plus one, but with the 85% fitness, it's almost a wash. I'm virtually a zero. Uh, I've got plus one to the mountain, plus one to the stamina resistance, and that's it in terms of usefulness. Uh, but 15k to go, and a little fatigued. Uh, don't love my chances. This one's a little more mountainy than uh, than punchy. I mean, we've got what 11 and a half k to go, so I'd say it's about a 5k climb. That's pretty hefty for a weak mountain rider like myself. I don't think we'll have much left for the uh, finish line on this one, but we will hang on as best we can because we should see that peloton split up a little bit more, and maybe my position improves where it failed to last stage. Watch. When I miss the group, we'll see that gap. Even if I'm a bike length behind versus that minute and a half crap that we had last time. But look how fast these guys are pushing on. Three and a half K to go. Gel kicks in. I'm using a little bit of my hill rating, but I really can't afford too much. 2.9 K. Now pushing a 91. I'm slowly making my way through for that, but not having enough left for the uh, final push at the uh, finish line. One and a half K to go now. And we're going to sprint it out as we are done with red bar and into that yellow bar, but that should get us just about to the finish line. But we're on the wide side. We're on the outside here with 400 meters. And I think that's going to cost me a few spots. Valter takes the win. McNulty, George Bennett, Valter pulled away a good bit there on that one. And I am just outside of the top 10, maybe still top 20, but there's a huge group of riders right here with me. I come up about 30 meters short of the finish line on the energy. Drops me back maybe a bike length. I get 33rd on the stage. Never fails. When I'm not in the front group, time gaps are always given. Anyway, uh, not just that. Not just that. We do get the third group gaps so we are on same time as Hoyce it's not all bad I suppose 31 seconds is that gap behind me though what does that one look like not a gap given until 65th place another minus two draws certainly not doing me any favors 
on what's already going to be a difficult stage, time trialing now. Uh, sorry, prologue mostly today, and I get a minus three in that department. So we're looking at about a 64 rating with a 63 mountain, meaning I've got about a 63, 64 overall. It's going to really hurt my chances of a finish, which actually was not looking so bad before the stage because there's 10 riders that have gained time over the field. But 11 through 60 is on same time. And I'm sitting 13th overall, but at the same time all the way down to 60th. Had we gotten that separation on stage 3 as we so clearly deserved, uh, we would have had a much better shot at things. So I've saved up a little bit of energy on this one through the first phase to push a little harder on the climb. We're now going 87 through here. We have 1.5k to go, and we get into the serious part which is going to take a lot more out of us, a lot faster. Final kilometer here. Attacking it. Working hard. 500 meters. Pushed a little too hard there, but there you go. You get to the finish line just 58 seconds down, but that's only 79th place. McNulty claims the stage win and the overall win as a result. Volter slips to second. Oldani moves up onto the podium after a strong performance from him. I think he had a third on the stage. Asgreen was like second on the stage. Rue gets 24th, so I'm not going to get any bonus XP for that, and I slip to 49th. That's how far down the order I was had there only been that 22, because we're only a minute and a half down, which means we're still ahead of that chasing group that was more than two minutes behind us. If we had that minute and a half separation on stage three, many of these riders wouldn't have been there and I would be a good probably 30 places higher good enough to be in the top 25 anyway well obviously I would have been in the top 20 so it, yeah likely would have been good enough for about 15th that's okay it happens <laughs> it happens because it's a problem that the game's had for ages and continues to have and we just have to deal with it move on no gain here. Minor XP is all we managed through this one. Six points per stage. That's slow going for leveling up. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Nikathong Gimmer. Like, comment, subscribe. See you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.